We don't even have Scotty up here. I was teasing Scotty about coming up and being with you today. All right. Okay, in a few minutes, I'm going to read a story uh, from the Gospel of Luke, and it's about a little guy named Zacchaeus, right? Okay, and then after I get done with the message, I'm going to have you guys help me with, with a special thing, all of you. So I want you all to stay up here. But Zacchaeus, we know that story because Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, and so he crawled up on a tree, and he looked down and saw Jesus, and then Jesus invited him, or, or invited himself, did he? He said, I want to come to your house and, and have dinner with you, and... And, and spend time with you. And then Zacchaeus does something really interesting. He changes the way he was thinking. He was kind of a greedy old soul, and, and he had kind of a hard heart. And then all of a sudden, he decided he wanted to help others, and he wanted to give away his, his wealth, right? And he changed. And he did something really interesting. And I wanted to talk to you about, about you know, when we talk about hearts, we can talk about the heart that beats inside our chest, right? Or when we talk about a heart, it can also be like the way we think, isn't it? The way we act, the way we, when you hear yourself in your head and your thoughts, that's, and, and the way you act, that's all about your heart, right? Okay, does that make sense? Everybody follow me then? And the thing about our hearts is we go through life and we, things happen to us. Okay, and we might have something happen and we get a ding in our heart. Okay, probably going to ding both sides, isn't it? And we get, we have some trouble in our life. Somebody we love that dies or something, somebody says something bad about us. And all of a sudden we've got more, ugh, and our heart starts getting kind of messed up a little bit. And then something really bad comes along. Oh, and our heart gets really sad looking, doesn't it? And just when we think that the worst stuff that can happen to us happens, all of a sudden something really bad comes along and our heart starts being pretty messed up, doesn't it? And we're pretty broken. And we talk about having a broken heart, don't we? And that's kind of what it looks like, isn't it? Our heart's kind of a mess. And that's the way Zacchaeus was. He had, because he was a tax collector, nobody wanted to be around him. They didn't like him. They were mean to him. They, they, he was looked down upon as being a bad person. And maybe he was that way because somebody had been bad to him. But his heart was a mess, and he was broken. And so many times in life, we find ourselves with a broken heart too, don't we? But what did Zacchaeus do? It's the same thing that we need to do. What? I tried to learn about. He met somebody, didn't he? Who did he meet? Jesus. He met Jesus. Now, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> for those that know, uh, but it's been my mic. There, there we go. I'm back. Uh, I'm fading in and out. A couple years ago, we did a, a living last supper, and Scott was was Jesus. And so from now, you know, whenever we needed Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is here. And so Zacchaeus met Jesus, and he talked to Jesus, and he heard what Jesus was telling him about loving others and being kind. And he took that broken heart, and he gave his heart to Jesus. And what did Jesus do for him? He gave him a new heart. Yeah, and that's a pretty heart. A new heart, a stronger heart. The heart where he loved others and he was kind and he changed, didn't he? He wasn't the same person anymore. All of a sudden he was a new person in Christ. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. He wants us to give our broken heart to him and he'll give us his brand new heart. It's a pretty cool heart, right? Yeah, a lot better than the one who's all busted up and messed up, right? Praise God, all right? So we're going to say a prayer, and then Jesus is going to give you all a new heart, but then I want you to stick around up here to help me with the sermon today, okay? All right? At least the beginning of it. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for these children. We thank you that, for the fact that, that if we just turn over our brokenness to you, that you will, in fact, make us complete once again, and that through you, each and every one of us can, can and will be a new being. We thank you for that, and we ask for your blessing upon these children. We ask for your guidance for us as we teach these children, and we just lift them up to you, and we ask for your, your grace upon all of them and all of us. Amen. Okay, now, Jesus.
Jesus is going to give you a new heart. Then I want you to help me with this heart. Excuse me, I'm going to squeeze my ear with this. <laughs> So now they come up here. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Okay. Now, because we're talking about Zacchaeus, I asked Jody to have the kids help me out with this. So guys, get up on your feet. Are you ready? I should turn the mic over towards the computer, shouldn't I? You want to come up and help them? No? Okay. Are you all ready? Okay, let's hope this works. Where's the mouse? children you're going to have. <laughs> Praise God, right? Right, Jack? Absolutely. Have, have faith. God will provide. There are plenty of children. That was wonderful. I love that. Thank you, kids. Um, if you haven't figured it out already, we're talking about Zacchaeus today. Um, big surprise. Judy, Judy didn't know. You didn't know that, did you, Judy? Big surprise. Okay. So we're in Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. Uh, so turn to your, turn to Luke. I didn't look up what page it is, but Luke 19, 1 to 10. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to seek to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. Now this, this bit of scripture comes right after, or shortly after, the, the story or Luke's story of the rich young ruler and the story of the healing of the blind man. Um, and it is, uh, we, we have the, the thing that's in common with the story of the healing of the blind man is we have another story about seeing, don't we? Wanting to see. Now Zacchaeus, of course, is a, is a chief tax collector in Jericho, the Jericho region. Jericho was a very wealthy area. This Zacchaeus guy, whoever he is, was not just your average wealthy person. Zacchaeus would have been 
quite well to do. Uh, in order for him to have gotten that job in the first place, he had to have been wealthy from the get-go because the Romans would come in and they would contract with somebody of means in that region to be the chief tax collector, and that chief tax collector would pay up front to the Romans the taxes due for that region. And then it was his job to go out and try to collect and reimburse himself, and always they were trying to make a profit as well. So let's move over to the, this mic, okay? I'm going to turn this one off. Yeah, I'll leave it off. Are we live now? Okay. So he would, he would then hire other people to help him co collect the taxes and try to, to collect at more, again, than he had spent himself, because he's in it for, for profit. He's not in it to lose money. Uh, so Zacchaeus is a, not just an average wealthy guy. Zacchaeus is in a rich region. He's a chief tax collector. He's got some means. But as a result of that, he is, you know, not welcome at the table, so to say. He's not welcomed by any of the fellow Jews. They want nothing to do with him. He's a collaborator. And worse than being just a collaborator, he's a guy that's in fellowship or, or companionship with Gentiles, regularly the Romans. And by virtue of that would make him unclean, but the fact that he has collaborated with them, he's working with them, makes him all the more despised. So he's very much looked down upon. And whether we believe that he is short or Jesus is short, we don't know because the Greek is unclear. One or the other of them is, is of small stature. Uh, because of that, he wants to see Jesus. He's no doubt heard about Jesus and having sympathy for people like him. Just a few stories back, we had the Pharisee and the tax collector, and Jesus told a story about elevating the tax collector who was repentant, at least partially repentant, at least giving up and confessing, not necessarily repentant, but confessing his sins, and Jesus was sympathetic to him. And he's eating with, with, with people that are, that are looked down upon and despised. So he realizes this man is willing to have some kind of contact, is willing to at least look upon him. So he goes and he finds a way to see him. He runs to that tree. Now remember that in Jewish culture, adult men don't run. That's not dignified. He runs to the sycamore tree, and he climbs a tree. It's another thing that a grown man is not going to do in Jewish culture, is climb a tree like a child. Not something they would do. Now this tree, we, we read it as a sycamore tree, and we think about it as being, you know, like the sycamore trees that we're used to. Well, what I'm told in reading about this, this type of tree is not actually what we think of as a sycamore. It's a type of evergreen tree that gets a small fruit that's sort of like a fig on it, and that the poor people would consume this fruit because it wasn't of low quality, but it was something that the poor people would do. So Zacchaeus has climbed a tree that represents poverty. You can look at it as poverty of spirit, right? Not poverty of finances, because Zacchaeus is financially rich. He's spiritually poor. So he climbs this tree that would humiliate him. Now, I'm not sure how many people have climbed evergreen trees here. Uh, evergreen trees are not things you want to climb. They typically are very scratchy. They typically are sticky. They're nasty. So this is not a tree that you want to get up in the branches of. So this is the desperation that he has to see this man that he believes that he has heard would have pity on him. And he climbs that tree. And of course, Jesus looks up at him and sees him. And he calls him down. And you must, I must, rather I must eat at your house. It says, I must go to your house. That word must, I must stay rather at your home today. That word must there is the same word that you use when Jesus says, I must go to Jerusalem. It's an imperative. It's an imperative that I go to your home today, Zacchaeus. I've been called. This is part of my mission. 
part of what I've been sent here to do is to go to your home. And he goes to Zacchaeus' home, and we see something revolutionary, or not the word I want, but, but something dramatic that happens. Zacchaeus, this man who has been collaborating, who obviously has been looked down upon, he's, he, he's despised, and he, because of this experience with Jesus, because he's met this man that accepts him and loves him, and is willing to deface himself by going to the house of one that's unclean, one that's despised, the home of a tax collector, and not just an average tax collector, but a cheap tax collector. You can't get worse than that in the Jewish eyes. Jesus doesn't care. He goes to his home and he dines with him. He has a meal. We're led to believe in this that he spends the night, actually, if you look at it in Greek. It's not like he just goes there and leaves. It's like he goes and that's where he stays in Jericho. It's with Zacchaeus overnight. Zacchaeus, as a result of this, stands up in his home and has a changed heart. And I gave away the heart I had, but I was going to use that. I forgot. But he has a changed heart. His heart has changed. And he does something. He changes his way of behaving. Not, I'm going to give half of, not just my income, but if you look at it in the Greek, it's half of everything I own. I'm going to sell half of my possessions and give that funds to the poor. And, from, and if I've defrauded anyone, I'm going to go to the maximum required by the law. The law has various different degrees of of, of restitution that you're supposed to do if you wrong someone four times is the maximum. He's going to go all the way. He's going to peg it out. I'm not going to negotiate. I'm not going to try to say, well, you know, I'm going to negotiate, Barry. I, I was bad. But can I give you just like 10% over what I stole from you? Is that, are you good with that? No. He's going to go all the way. He's, he's all in, as they say. Now, this story follows the rich young ruler, doesn't it? And at the end of the story of the rich young ruler, what does Jesus tell us? It's easier for a camel to walk through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into paradise. What's happened here? This Zacchaeus guy may even be more wealthy than the rich young man. We don't know. This cheap tax collector, that's a big deal. He's given up without even being asked. Now Jesus asked him to give up what he had and to come and follow him. Zacchaeus doesn't even squabble. He just says, I'm in. I'm going to take care of the poor. I'm going to repay those that I'm wrong. And he's all in. And so, how hard is it for a rich man to get into paradise? Not that hard for Jesus. If he gives that brokenness, that broken heart that he gave to Scott, a.k.a. Jesus, Jesus hands him back a new heart. He changed his way of being. And we talked in Sunday school this morning. I love how God works things out. We've been going through this experience in God for over a year. And we finally get to this part about changing your life. And it happens to be when I want to preach this sermon or I'm called to preach this sermon. You know, that, that's kind of long-term planning. God works on the long term, doesn't he, Jeff? He doesn't just work on, on one day at a time. He provided the children. He provided the Sunday school lesson this morning. When we come to Jesus, when we really encounter Jesus, we are supposed to change. We're supposed to give up that old way of being. We let go of that brokenness. And the sad thing is, it's really hard to let go of that brokenness sometimes, isn't it? We want to hold on to it. You know, I gave that heart to, to Scott really easy. But sometimes it takes us, sometimes people are, are experiencing, uh, no, I can't quite let this, I want to hold on to this brokenness. We just need to give it up. Hand it off. And accept that love. Accept that change, embrace that change, and be that change. That's one of those overused sayings. But we need to be the change. Be a blessing to someone today. You've all never heard that saying, right? Be a blessing to someone today. Never heard it ever. Uh, it's, it's new and new and improved. Um, but we truly are supposed to do that. That's what we're called to do. We're called to accept that heart. We're called to take that heart and to share that heart like I did with a little girl. You share that heart. You give that heart to another. Let's be, we be that blessing. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the story of Zacchaeus, the change that Zacchaeus has in his life, Lord, that he had through his encounter with Jesus. Lord, we pray that, that you will allow us to, 
to feel that same change, to allow us to be that same change, and to take that change out into the world and be your voice in this broken and modern world. Pray this in your name and in your glory. Amen.